be calcified. It was still black, but you hit it, Price hit it with an Explorer, and it was uh, almost as solid as uh, tooth enamel that it had recalcified. So if you want to move to an island that has no connection with the rest of the world, you can recalcify teeth. Uh, if you want to live in our society, you better get your tooth filled. But there are types of fillings in the plastics. Uh, there are something on the order of 60% of the plastic fillings contain aluminum. And the aluminum seeps out and activates some of the bacteria in ways that we would not find healthy. And this is research that we have just found in the last week as to finding out what is going on here. And it is another one of the scary things that I've run into. So using a compatible material is the best way out. And even though gold is expensive, it's a good investment because, you know, mine have been in there for, what, 40 years. Didn't you say that gold has a little bit of copper in it? I said that 90% of the dental gold has copper in it, and copper is going to create a problem, too. So what are we filling our cavities with? Where do we go, and what do we do? There are dental materials that are, uh, in general, they're called 90-10s. They have about 90% gold and 10% platinum. Gold is a little soft for a filling material, but if you add platinum to it, it becomes much harder. And what happens is it turns silverish in color, and that's why they put copper in it, so it looks like gold again. But if you get the ones that contain uh, 85 90% gold and the rest of it uh, platinum, and sometimes there's 1% of something else in there to increase the flow characteristics while casting it, that I don't have a problem with. But if you've got one that is very high, gold and platinum and has very little other things in it, then you've got something that can last for years, and if you keep your chemistry in balance, it can last you the rest of your life, where the plastics are not going to last the rest of your life unless they shorten your life, and certainly the mercury does not last that long, and it has uh, very detrimental effects to your health. So right now, there's a lot of people, thanks to your work and Weston Price's work, that are not going with mercury in their mouth. They're going with the plastic, the white amalgam? Uh, yes. Uh, amalgam means literally mixed with mercury, so it's not white amalgam. It's okay. plastic. But when I first started talking about mercury back in 1973, dentistry was placing a million amalgams a day in the U.S. That's the mercury filling. And today, they claim they're down to a hundred to 150,000 a day. Not real good ways of measuring that, but at least uh, they have reduced it substantially since I started pointing out what it is doing. So, but are you telling me that the plastics have aluminum in them? About 60% of them have aluminum. And it's, uh, you can see it on x-ray. Uh, I remember some years ago... Um, Somebody we had just hired, been with me for a month or two. If you've worked for me for a while, you get curious about what's going on in your own body. And she came in and handed me an x-ray and said, what do you think of my x-ray? It was a big panorex, and I just picked it up and held it up to the light. And I said, yeah, four, five, five. Hey, you've got about seven amalgams in there. And she said, no, I've had my amalgams removed. Those are composites. And I looked again, and yeah, they... They weren't quite as bright as amalgam, but certainly much brighter than the safe composites. Uh, the composites that are safe don't last as long, but on the x-ray, it's hard to see them. But if they have high aluminum, they last longer, which is what dentistry is interested in. Some reason other dentists are taught you should put in a filling that's going to last for a million years. And, you know, then you go to the automotive industry and they have a whole industry in there uh, that uh, limits the lifespan of anything that you put in it. Uh, planned obsolescence, it is called. Well, dentistry tries to make things last a long time, but at the expense of the patient's health. And this is a part that is not taught, so you can't blame your dentist for it. It's whoever is controlling the dental association. 
that, of course, what's the primary thing here? What's the most important thing in the world? Money. You know, as long as you're interfering with people's money, you're going to get in trouble. And the, dentist, the Dental Association does not want to be sued for hiding this information. They've known about, hey, the Dental Association destroyed itself in 1840 on the argument over mercury. Should we use it because it's cheap or should we not use it because it poisons people? And it destroyed the association, which wasn't put back together until almost 1900. And then it was put back together under the premise that mercury is now safe. In fact, the Dental Association has been quoted saying, yes, mercury is the most hazardous uh, metal that's not radioactive. However, get this, in the mouth, its toxic properties are rendered harmless. I took a postdoctoral master's in immunology about 20 years ago, and I told that to the professors there, and they were absolutely astounded that a profession with the reputation of dentistry could say that this being in the mouth rendered the toxic properties harmless. One of them, one of the professors said they must have discovered alchemy. But, you know, why do they do it? To prevent being sued because of the dental association, dentist, I mean, of all the diseases that dentistry creates, if this were suddenly made uh, public on something big, uh, the only people in the world who had any money would be the lawyers. And we can't afford to do that. But dentistry, I have talked to U.S. Congress about, can't we say that anybody who places an amalgam after today is under the gun and if it was before today, uh, they're home free? And they said, no. You cannot do that because it's been listed as fraudulent in the past. You cannot, you are not forgiven for that at seven years or any other. He said, when did you place your first amalgam? Mm, I thought a minute. I said, 1916. He said, you're still responsible for that amalgam and what it may have done to somebody. Well, hopefully it fell out a long time ago. Money is what's behind all this. I would like to go back to some of Steinman's work, if we could, Kim. There are a couple other things that need to be... Uh, Absolutely. We can go back there in one moment. I want to go back to one thing for the audience. They are sitting there right now saying to themselves, where in the heck am I going to go? How am I going to get this material, this 90-10 or 85 to 90 percent, and then... How am I going to get my dentist to fill my cavities with this? Oh, my God, what am I going to do? Yes. I don't want aluminum in my mouth. That is a big problem because if you say, if a dentist, let's say that, that Kim calls a dentist and says, is mercury harmful? And he says, yes, he's going to be selling used cars tomorrow because they will send him a letter saying, your license is gone and don't bother to apply in the 50 states because we've informed them that you're a bad person and you're out of dentistry. So the dentist... If he stands up against the Dental Association, uh, he's putting his neck on the line. Now, we do have people that we have trained who will do that. And if people want to call our uh, toll-free number, which, I don't know, maybe you've got it. I've got it here someplace. 866-948-4638. Yeah, that's it. Uh, we can perhaps guide you to somebody who can... Uh, assist you. If you're interested in health, we do have some people around the country who will do that, and we can refer you there. But just to go shopping around through the phone book, um, number one, the dentist is going to hang up on you because he's going to think that he's being set up. Because all they have to do is send you a piece of paper that says uh, your eight years of education and hundreds of thousands of dollars of investment in it and so on, it's gone as of right now. Is that what happened to you? No, they took a month trial to to hang me. I think I was hit with something like 140, 150 different um, challenges of which the only things they could make stick were I refused to place amalgam and refused to refer somebody for placement of amalgam. Well, nobody ever asked, but that didn't come out. That was the result of the trial. And... Um, the second point was I refused to do root canals and refused to um, refer people to have root canals done. And the third one, <laughs> the really big one, that poor little book, it's all in your head, was challenged because I had written a book they didn't like 
called It's All in Your Head. That poor little book's been through court four times. And it was <laughs> one four times because it seems that even though my name is...